Hey guys, welcome to another video, and it's been a while, so I'm just going to kind of get right into it. Um, this is vlog 3 for Marked, um, and I guess we should just start with chapter 14. Um, I've had these notes written for a while, so if I look off camera, I'm just checking my notes off out real quick. Um, 14 kind of picks up, chapter 14 picks up with Zoe's kind of her first day um, at school, I guess. Um, or, well, part of her first day. Um, it kind of picks up where chapter 13 left off. Um, she's in the fencing classroom. She kind of expresses kind of admiration for the sport, um, and um, he's basically given a bit of, not so much a history lesson, but she's kind of given this whole thing about, oh, well, it's like, if you, if you don't have the skill for it, or you can have all the knowledge that you, that you want, but if you don't know how to use it, then it's kind of pointless, which is, um, I guess, kind of true of everything. Um, apparently, fencing is also the only sport where men and women can compete on an even playing field, specifically p because of that um, skill. Um, I don't know much about fencing, so um, I'm probably going to have to look into that one. Um, and kind of after after the fencing class, um, she kind of has this um, equine studies class, and it kind of brings up one of my favorite teachers um, in the book, Lenobia, who is well, I mean. It's an equine studies class, so she's obviously the, the horse master, I guess. And it's just kind of... I don't know, she's got this holier-than-thou attitude that isn't really um, holier-than-thou, if that makes any sense. Um, she doesn't really have a whole lot of patience for nonsense. Uh, and then from there we go to chapter 15 and I'm actually just going to talk about chapters 15 and 16 together. Um, chapter 15 sees Zoe at her first full moon ritual and essentially what this is is a circle is cast and the high priestess will call on the elements who then come to the circle and it's basically one big, um, one big to do. Um, I liked it. I liked that particular aspect. I liked how they explained it. Um, it's just something interesting and, and different. Um, and we kind of get this hint of that, that Zoe has something unique, I guess. Because as every element is called, she feels something. So, you know, she'll smell grass, or she'll feel a breeze on her face, or something like that. Um, which I thought was very interesting, because it's not something that I've seen very often. Um, and if we go back to... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so with chapter 15, um, with the conclusion of chapter 15, Zoe pretty much heads straight off to a Dark Daughters ritual. And if you guys have seen the previous vlogs, um, I think I mentioned them um, in the first or the second vlog. Um, it's basically like a secret club meeting, I guess. Um, and we basically get this whole thing where 
Aphrodite does the same thing that Neferet does. She casts a circle. Um, the elements are called again. Um, you know, Zoe at one point, you know, once the circle is cast, everybody starts to socialize, and Zoe notices um, Elliot in the corner, that irritating kid that I mentioned in the last vlog. And he's kind of kind of slumped over, um, and she kind of learns the horrifying truth that the wine that they had at the ceremony was laced with Elliot's blood. Not really something she was expecting. <laughs> um, and this kind of... she freaks out about this, obviously, and kind of takes off. So, if we go on to chapter 17... Okay, so after 16 she runs off and finds herself at a wall on the I guess on the very edge of campus, where she meets one of the cats from her her dream, from I believe the thirteenth chapter, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this is the cat that has decided that she is that that Zoe is her owner. Um, Kayla and Heath then show up, and essentially they tr they tells Zoe, look, we're here to rescue you, we're... And then this is in spite of the fact that if Zoe leaves the campus, she could very well end up dying. <laughs> Something that they don't really, uh... seems to understand. Um, at one point, Zoe ends up scratching Heath and goes through bloodlust, which is very unusual for a fledgling. Um, and she only kind of avoids feeding on him when Kayla, who she'd scared off just a little while earlier, comes back and starts screaming at her. Um, and the, so the two of them leave after that. Zoe again kind of freaks out. And um, we get Eric Knight, who comes in and basically kind of talks some sense into her, kind of calms her down a bit, which, I mean, I will admit I quite liked that. It was different. He kind of explains a little bit about how bloodlust works and how it is very unusual for fledglings to experience it because it's not something that you're supposed to learn until... Uh, your fifth former year, or your sixth former year, or something like that. And, um, so yeah, I, I thought that was very, um, interesting. I, it's not something that I've seen, um, before. And I actually said this when I did the review for Marked last year, is that the whole book is basically something I'd never seen before, so. Um, I will say... It, I did find it a little bit odd that Eric kind of just follows her around. <laughs> um, then again, I guess he's trying to be a nice guy. Um, so yeah, she she once she's calmed down, they head back to um, the dorm. He kind of walks her home, very old-fashioned, gentleman-like. <laughs> um, and when she actually gets there... She kind of has a chat with Stevie Ray about what has been going on during the night, and um, we actually finally get an idea of why Aphrodite scares um, Stevie Ray so badly. Um, and that Aphrodite has an affinity of her own where she sees visions of the future, which. Um, I've got to say, that's kind of cliché. I mean, yeah, it's not really something that I've seen a lot of, but you've just got the typical mean girl who, you know, is all uppity because she has special powers, basically. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of it. That, 
but uh, that's pretty much all I can say there. Um, when Stevie Ray kind of is asked about, well, look, have you ever felt anything during a circle casting, we kind of get this idea that, and it's actually outright stated, that look, if you've got an affinity for all five elements, that would make you, referring to Zoe, that would make you the most powerful fledgling in history. Because apparently no fledgling has ever had an affinity for all five elements. So, typical mean girl with powers, and typical new girl with powers. I'm um, pretty sure we can see where this is going. <laughs> um, and that kind of leads us to the last chapter for this particular vlog, chapter 20. Um, and chapter 20 just feels like a very big exposition dump. Um, Zoe joins the Dark Daughters planning to take Aphrodite down, which is what I said earlier. We we know where this is going. She's going to join the Dark Daughters and kind of try and take Aphrodite down a few pegs, which I'm on board with. I actually think that Aphrodite needs to be taken down a peg or two. Um, um, Neferet talks to Zoe, well, Zoe goes to Neferet for a bit and tells her about Heath and Kayla's visit which is where we learn about um, imprinting. And imprinting is basically a vampire will feed on a human and it'll put like a, a very strong bond between the two. It seems like this is something that started in Twilight because um, in the, the Twilight books was really the first time where I'd heard this kind of thing being referred to as imprinting. Um, it just seems like that's where it started and it just won't go away. <laughs> um, because I've seen similar stuff in other books. The Nightworld books in particular have their soulmate principle, um, which I didn't really touch on. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, but yeah. Um, they, they do kind of talk about breaking the bond, and how breaking the bond is not really easy to do. Um, it is possible, but none of the methods are um, pleasant. They are kind of, in fact, very unpleasant. And when Neferet says they're unpleasant, there's just something about how she says it that kind of puts Zoe off of the whole idea of, okay, let's get rid of this thing before it gets any serious, any, any worse. Um... We also get a very interesting um, thing on, on Neferet, where she talks about how she and Zoe start talking about their families, and Zoe kind of rants about how she hates her stepfather and how he's ruined everything and um, that kind of thing. And Neferet says, basically tells her about her own life, where she says, well, you know, when my mother died, I was, I was her replacement. So that, it, I, I will admit, it took me a second. I had to, when I read the book the first time, it actually took me a second to kind of put two and two together and go, oh, you know, Neferet was abused as a child, sexually abused and, and emotionally abused and that sort of thing. So that kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't really expecting um, expecting that. I just want to grab my the book. I should have had it in my lap, but anyway. I um, wasn't expecting it, and then I actually checked the back of the book, and it actually says right below the barcode, not suitable for younger readers. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, Neferet also seems to have a serious bone to pick with Bram Stoker, because at one point when she's describing imprinting, Zoe makes a very apt um, analogy to Bram Stoker's um, Dracula, and Neferet kind of lashes out and goes, no, it's nothing like that book. You know, his book caused all kinds of trouble for us, and, you know, it's it's kind of kind of interesting, because every other vampire book that references Stoker um, and, and Dracula talks about how, oh, well, 
um, you didn't get everything right. Or um, they talk about how he was a human who kind of stumbled onto something and maybe he met with a vampire and the vampire was taken away before he could give away anything more than what he'd already given. Um, so, but you don't get typically get this angry kind of furious reaction to Bram Stoker's novel by other vampires in other books, at least as far as I've seen. So this is kind of the first time that I'd ever seen that. Um, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it for, for this one. I realize this is, I know this does probably feel a little bit rushed. I'm trying to kind of put this out before the camera stops recording. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I will have the next vlog video up as soon as, as possible. Um, I'm actually working on the final set of notes for the next vlog already. Um, things have gotten pretty hectic, so I haven't been able to upload anything for a while. But um, the next vlog video is almost ready. I just need to finish up the notes and then I can record it and get it um, uploaded to the channel. So. Stay tuned for that. I've got a book review coming up pretty soon. Um, at the time that you're seeing this, it's probably already up. If it isn't already, it should be up soon. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.